Welcome back to Flashpoint. We're looking back on what was the bonkers year we had here. When Joe Biden takes the oath of office in just a few weeks, he really has one Carolina man to thank. By all accounts, Biden ran a horrible campaign in the primaries in the spring, losing one after the other. He didn't even come close in those early ones. He was totally written off by a lot of folks. Then a single endorsement in the state of South Carolina changed the course of his campaign and therefore history. Congressman Jim Clyburn announcing his support for Biden. Political analysts say that decision, that single decision, ended up winning the primary for Biden, eventually winning the nomination, changing everything. Rarely in politics do you see an endorsement have this big of impact. Democrats quickly coalesced around Biden. Then came the November election. He lost North Carolina, but won a record 81 million votes. Let us be the nation that we know we can be. A nation united, a nation strengthened, a nation healed. The United States of America, ladies and gentlemen, there's never, never been anything we've tried we've not been able to do. Four days after the election, Joe Biden was finally projected the winner. In a primetime address to a divided nation, he called for unity and healing. The president-elect pledging to work for all Americans. For all those of you who voted for President Trump, I understand the disappointment tonight. I've lost a couple times myself, but now, Let's give each other a chance. Running mate Kamala Harris shattering a glass ceiling, the first woman and first person of color elected vice president. While I may be the first woman in this office, I will not be the last. Meanwhile, the Trump campaign filing 56 lawsuits alleging claims of voter fraud and asking for recounts in several states, yet providing no evidence. 50 of those lawsuits have been denied, dismissed, or withdrawn, the recounts all producing the same result. The Supreme Court also refusing to take up the claims. In mid-December, the Electoral College got a lot more attention than in years past when it was just a formality. That again, making Biden's win official. Hours after electors cast their vote, President-elect Joe Biden unleashing a scathing attack against President Trump for trying to overturn the election. Biden stressing that he won 306 electoral votes, the same number Trump received in 2016 when he called that win a landslide. When asked a few weeks ago if he would leave the White House if the Electoral College formalized Joe Biden's victory, President Trump said he would. So if, if the Electoral College does elect President-elect Joe Biden, are you not going to leave this building? Just so you, uh, certainly I will. Certainly I will. And you know that. On January 6th, Congress will officially count those electoral votes with Biden to be sworn in as the 46th president two weeks later. While President Trump didn't win overall, he once again carried North Carolina and on his coattails, Republicans winning big in the Tar Heel state. The biggest one, perhaps Senator Tom Tillis, while down in almost every single poll, some by 10, 12 points, he came away the winner after all the votes were counted. The race between him and Cal Cunningham ended up being the most expensive Senate race in the country's history ever. But just weeks ago, a lot of drama. Tillis came down with COVID after attending a ceremony at the White House for Amy Coney Barrett. But it was Cunningham who had the bigger scandal, getting caught sexting a woman outside of his marriage. Cunningham then going basically silent for the rest of the campaign when supporters really needed to hear from him most. But it wasn't just a scandal that helped Republicans. Across the board, they won big here. Analysts we talked to say that when Democrats looked confident, that may have sent Republicans running to the polls. Uh, we are here today to celebrate an absolutely fantastic election day. North Carolina's Republican Party chair thrilled about his party's wins, from the state's first African-American Republican lieutenant governor to several key congressional races. We're also very excited about the three uh, congressional races that we had here in North Carolina, which were contested. The Republican Speaker of the House says now, though, it's time to work together with Democrats. But at some point in the near future, we have to eventually put aside being Republicans, being Democrats, and realize and recognize the fact that we're all Americans. The Republicans also winning big in the courts here in North Carolina. Republican Paul Newby beating out Democratic incumbent Sherry Beasley for the chief justice seat. Newby won by just 400 votes. Keep that in mind next time you think your vote doesn't count. Also important to note, the 2020 election, the first time ever that Republicans have swept all eight state judicial races, races here in North Carolina. History also made here in North Carolina in the state's 11th congressional district at just 25 years old. Madison Cawthorn will become the youngest member of Congress. 
This is video of him at the RNC while, where he got out of his wheelchair to stand up after a speech. Cawthorn has been in a wheelchair since 2014 when he was paralyzed from a car accident. Well, we were expecting a close Senate race in South Carolina, but that's not really what ended up happening. Lindsey Graham going on to win another term, beating out Democratic challenger Jamie Harrison. Harrison became one of the most successful Senate candidates when it came to fundraising, raising, get this, $57 million in the third quarter alone. That led to a flood of outside money as well. Lots of commercials on your TV, too. Graham had never faced an appointment with so much money. Many polls show the race tied or neck and neck right up until election day. However, honestly, in the end, Senator Graham won by a solid 10 points. And we can't forget, less than two months before the election, the world lost an icon. At the age of 87, Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed away. The late justice celebrated as a trailblazer for equal rights, especially women. Even her dissenting court opinions helped pave the way for future legislation. In death as in life, Justice Ginsburg broke down barriers, becoming the first woman and the first Jewish person to lie in state at the U.S. Capitol. The battle to replace her on the Supreme Court, a heated one, of course. President Trump nominated federal judge Amy Coney Barrett, a favorite among social conservatives. Despite four years prior, Republicans refusing to fill that seat during an election year, they rushed to get Judge Barrett confirmed for sure. It seems as if we couldn't even take a breath before we started talking about the 2022 election. North Carolina Congressman Mark Walker announcing he's running for the Senate. The Republican says he has the experience to fight and win. In Washington, Republican Richard Burr is set to retire that year, and Walker aims to take the seat. But he's not going to be alone. Nope. Someone else said to possibly be running for that Senate seat. Lara uh, Trump, President Trump's daughter-in-law, she's from Wilmington, grew up there, also has her bachelor's degree from NC State, was a prominent person in her uh, father-in-law's presidential campaign this past year. We've also got our eyes on local state Senator Jeff Jackson. He tweeted out, quote, since the election, I've received a lot of encouragement to run for U.S. Senate in 2022. So here's what I'm going to do. Marissa, his wife, and I are going to talk about it over the holiday. Family considerations come first. Politics second. I'll update you after our family talks it over. So stand by for news from Senator Jeff Jackson coming up in the new year.